Thanks, Mark. It's the first time I've ever uh, ever had to foreclose on a bank. It might be my last chance too. <laughs> so I, I guess we've heard from Susan and Mark uh, the same themes with the reset uh, that Mike and uh, Colin alluded to right at the opening. So we've uh, we've got the uh, the app. So please use uh, Slido and through the. Uh, the, uh, the entrance there with uh, PS 2018 uh, and keep those questions coming through. Now, I think we have one from the floor to start with. Where's uh, Shane who's going to uh, kick this off? Shane, have you got? Is there another microphone there? Yeah. Uh, just to Susan, just around, I guess, you know, the principles that you've, you've sort of covered off. How does that align, I guess, or well not align, with the data that we're seeing out of Deering Base and how relevant is that? Yeah. And basically, the, the data and the, and the trends are, are, are very similar across all the, all the different data sets. Um, some of the numbers might differ slightly, but the overall trends um, and, and around what's driving profitability um, and where the costs are sitting on farms are, are really similar across all. All the, um, all the databases we have. So we've just got Mark Neal up front here. Mark, do you want to comment, comment on that from uh, a dairy-based perspective? Yeah, yeah, so Mark Neal from Dairy NZ. Uh, yeah, so we've done a lot of work with Dairy Base. Uh, myself and Lawrence are actually talking uh, tomorrow. And uh, absolutely, you know, it's a really good alignment with, uh, with what ANZ is saying here about you know, the importance of pasture profitability. Um, how important cost control is, and certainly far more than milk solids per cow, and also like the associated costs of feeding supplement. You know what ha what happens to your system when they come into the system. Thanks, Mark. Uh, probably we'll hit now to the uh, to the app. So the first question on the board there, with reduction in share milk has grown equity. Uh, uh, sorry, and growing equity uh, pressures on overseas investment. Who's going to be buying the farms into the future? Matt, this might be a question for you. Well, probably the first answer is people that are profitable. Uh, but beyond that, uh, I think there's a lot of things to consider at the present time. I mean, you know, I think the average farm is only so 100 hectares. So I think in the context of Canada, when we think about buying farms, uh, 300 hectares. If you think about the capital tied up on that, roughly 70,000 bucks a hectare, it's 21 million dollars. So you either have to save about 10 million dollars or uh, partner. But we're also seeing people reconsider how those farms are set up. So petition them down maybe to think something a little different, clearly partnering uh, with others. So, a number of ideas. Thanks, mate. And so, please, if there's any questions from the floor, if you just wave down. Those with the, uh, the microphones on either sides. Keith, you have a question for yeah, yeah, thank you, um, Susan and uh, Mark. You, you both highlighted the uh, uh, high indebted farms we have, uh, mainly in Canterbury, but probably across New Zealand. Uh, and that's all fine and dandy when the payout's got a six in front of it, and we've had um, three years of, of, of those payouts being really good, but with the payouts getting down to uh, the high fours or close to five, there's going to be quite an issue. So what, what's ANZ got in, in the toolbox to um, help themselves? Mark, you had to go, and then maybe Susan follow. We'll see if the answers are the same. <laughs> um, well, anyone that's in that position, they want time. And, and I guess what we can give them is time. But as they have to use that time very wisely, uh, because you know uh, uh, what fixes a low milk price is normally a low milk price. So there is the ability for the price to come back up. It's about whether we all want to go through that process of exposure again and again. So I, I think you know um, you know one of the things when you when you're dealing with people that are you know have a level of indebtedness where it's not um, improving. What you typically find is they, they, they themselves aren't that satisfied with that. And so, you know, I think the next part is around how you work with your team of people, whether it be their financial independent people, whether it's their operational performance assistance people, might be something around who's actually involved in the business at even their management level, 
because in many cases, uh, some of the reasons for indebtedness is just simple, they ask things that can be fixed. Uh, but if they're, if they're far more systemic, um, you know, the, the, there is uh, there is greater challenges. Hence my point at the moment, when the when the money's good, what are we doing? Well, we're very probably quite insistent about uh, getting that debt back so they can prepare themselves for the future. Thanks, Mark. Susan, do you have anything? <coughs> I mean, I, I guess um, you know, just being here today is, is part of this too. It, it, it really does come down to you know down to mindset because I mean I think the great thing about um, New Zealand's dairy industry is just how <coughs> willing everyone is to share um, on how they're doing things differently. Um, and certainly, you know, there's a massive range in, in how profitable different farms are. Thanks, Susan. We'll now uh, take the uh, the question on the screen. My banker tells me I've got to produce 300,000 solids to pay my interest. If I feed this, I won't be able to pay the interest. Mark, was that, or sorry, Susan? Who, who's in the credit department? <laughs> Neither of us in the credit department. But um, I mean, I, th I think here it really comes down to if you know your numbers, you can you can tell you can say where you're profitable and at what level you're profitable. But you've got to know your numbers to be able to do that. Um, so you might you might say, well, right, actually, if I produce two hundred fifty thousand kgs of milk solids, I'm I'm only going to spend this much, and then I'm going to have more money left at the end of the day. But it really just comes down to understanding those numbers and and what, what actually makes it most profit. Please stick up your hand from the floor if there's any questions. Uh, yeah, well, here's the other thing. Yeah, is, you know, three things uh, that I was taught when we started my career is that uh, you know, ask good questions, listen, and give an opinion. That looks a bit more like governance. And I think as a bank, we just need to be really careful that um, we are not suggesting what somebody has to do. We might have to own the result a little differently. So. Thanks, Mark. Now, company, we've got one from the floor. No, nothing from the floor. If not, we'll go back to the uh, to the app. We've got. Uh, so, what are the boxes that a young farmer needs to tick to get bank funding? Mark, this sounds like one for you. Yeah, well, we we're really fortunate. I reckon. I reckon a lot of people that I come in down here. First thing is they've um, often been around good farming people and they've learned really quickly about what some of the disciplines are. So. You know, desire, first of all, you know, turn up and have showed you're prepared. We had a shearmaker come in the other day, they want uh, to do something that's going to be quite leveraged. They turned up with a 10 point um, checklist of all the things that they thought they needed to do before they got there, and they worked us, uh, they worked their way through it. Uh, they'd done, um, they'd understood their balance sheets, understood uh, their budgets, they'd done cash flows. Look, in the day, we always reserved the right to go and check the arithmetic uh, our way. But uh, at the end of the day, what they'd really shown was where they're at, where they've come from, and how they've got there. So, you know, uh, if anyone thinks that you can sort of just turn up and ask for a whole heap of money without demonstrating you've worked to this point, um, you know, it, would, uh, it wouldn't be the right thing. And I think these days you've got Biz Start, Biz Grow, you've got Market Measure Courses, you've got Pass Profit. Outside of that, there's so many things that you can have done to show that you've gone and learned, listened, been aware of what the industry's doing. So I guess, Mark, just following on from that, it sounds like, you know, we're talking about a reset. There's a lot more opportunities coming. So those that do get this right, the young people coming through, the opportunities are going to be there. Can you comment on? Yeah, I think, you know, uh, we had one uh, recently where um, someone asked the question, you know, um, well, I made the point earlier today was uh, uh, bank funding with the chair around, you know, how, the, how those contracts are set up. Well, you know, actually, a very specific example, um, we're dealing with... Colin the other day on one, we were debating whether we should write an loan agreement with one particular share market. Um, they were in calf cow, right? which might, might not have been exactly what we should have done. But the point was, we're trying to think about what are those motivational settings that get people thinking around um, what's most uh, they can influence that actually does ultimately lead to profit rather than simply um, you know, uh, around some of the financial interests. <coughs> Thanks, mate. Just uh, heading to one final question. We're either on the board or we'll take it from the app. So probably, Susan, just if I put this one to you. The question's been asked that uh, the next downturn's coming and there's a requirement from the industry for another $3, million, uh, $3 billion of debt. Is the bank going to fund it? Well, um, the, you know, the appetite for funding 
I know the downturn is probably not re not really there, but I mean it obviously comes down to each individual circumstances. Um, but um, yeah, certainly things have changed. Mark can probably alert a little bit more around the, um, the banking, or he already has around around the, um, the the challenges we have as a bank as well. So um, yeah, I guess the short answer is is no. Yeah, I mean, I think if you look at that, uh, the graph which is stuck up around the capital, one of the things that Reserve Bank, uh, our regulators are looking at a lot more tightly is, is, um, is it acceptable for a bank to fund losses? So as a, as a borrower, one of the things, um, and as a lender we have to keep thinking about is, what are those other capital reserves or other options that are available so people can use their own balance sheet? I mean, most of the family business we deal with, they are their own the shareholders. So if they need cash or capital, then in reality, the only person they're likely to turn to is us. So with that in mind, it's very much together getting along, well, what would make this plan to borrow uh, be better? So it may be that uh, they've thought about other ways that they can um, raise liquidity, etc. cetera. Um, what I have heard, you know, is one of the things you need to understand, I guess, is that we will lend people money through periods of risk and it won't always work out, but we are very, uh, take a huge interest in how people responded in those times. So, you know, we'll still take risk, that's what we do. Uh, how people um, take the hit off that risk over a period of time, even if that's had, that meant they've had to do something extraordinary, uh, will be uh, something that will be taken into account for the things we do with them in the future. Thanks, mate. You put that so nicely. You, uh, you must have been incentivised to lend there for a while. You'd think, I think the answer was no. Um, so, but that brings, uh, that brings to, the, to the close of the session. So hand back to Julia and thank you very much to, uh, to Mark and Susan. guys. Um, look, I would encourage you again to invest in your knowledge and your finances and that doesn't mean you need to know how to do a set of accounts. Leave that part to your accountant. But understand what the end results are telling you. And get in the room, your accountant, your banker, anyone else that might have some sort of impact financially in your business. Get your ecosystem into the, into the room together.